I bet you've never seen a nigga that get raw like me. Gun in your face, put niggas on the floor like me. Who go to war like me? Flip a whore like me. With the squeeze on rap competitors like me. Get less and make more like me. Hunt a nigga down like the predator. Like me, keep the max in the drawer like me. How many niggas really raw to the motherfucking hardcore like me? It's Bumpy Knuckles, baby. I got lyrical styles forever. My endeavor is to smash you. That's, the, that's what I'm talking about. Like, like. I'm the best at that. I'm the best at those type of songs. I started that shit, man. I was the one who, who came out, you know, going hard. I've been going hard body forever. I didn't just start doing that. But when I fell back from doing it, I, I said, damn, now battle, a battle between two MCs is basically who can threaten each other the best. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not about your individual talent or your, your, your ability to take words and put them into mer- metaphoric structure and, 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 and place them across a two and a half minute uh, record to see who's better. It's not about that no more. It's like I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to tie you up and do. And then half of that, most of that shit, all of that shit is fake. So I said to myself, I said, you know what I want to do? I want to. I want to get people away from saying who did the beat. I took records that people already know, and I and I actually did it before when I did um, Why by Jicken. You know, because I said they just ask these great questions. You know, why this, why that, and I said then. But, um, what about what about if I, my questions would be different? I'm sure if if, if, if uh, KRS One did why his questions would be different. I, I thought that idea was incredible, and I wanted to try it. So I, I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I know how to I know how to get it get it popping. I'm, I'm gonna get it popping like this. I'm gonna take Fifty Cent's beats and I'm gonna rap over them and make my make my own records on his beats because I feel like doing it. Okay. And the last record on the on the mix CD will tell you whose whose records I'm gonna do next. So when you get the whole entire mix CD, you'll see it. And I call it the OG because it's a lot of cats from our era that just vanish in the thin air that want to go in the studio and make records, and they feel like they're not going to get a listen because they're not 19 years old. They're not 18 years old, and I think that shit is bogus. Is out of line and they claim to be street. So these new rap niggas don't want to see a player eat. I'm gonna run up on Kanye, rob him for the rock piece. Show that emotional ass nigga that he not street. I think Kanye is an incredible producer. I think he's an incredible rapper. I did not say anything about him as his talent. I said he's an emotional ass motherfucker. That's what he is. He's always crying and bitching and moaning about shit. You know, people people go to award shows. They can't wait to see Kanye jumping on the stage acting like a crybaby if he don't win. You know, like, and that's what that's how everybody feels about him. But that don't mean that he ain't talented. The motherfucker's incredibly talented. I think he's amazingly talented, and I don't take that from him. But you know, it's like that's why I pick certain guys in the songs. And it's not like I have a personal problem with him. But I'm, it's just me being an MC and saying. To, to people's face what everybody says behind somebody's back anyway. You know what I mean? Like, Kanye, everybody says that. Yo, why is he always crying and moaning and crabbing? Like, when you when Kanye was backpacking and all that stuff, and he's a backpack MC, he, and when he, before he won an award, you know, he, he didn't care about those things, but now you got to win every award. If you don't win an award, you don't win a fucking award. Stop crying. You know? I feel bad that, you know, these, these executives at these shows got to give him an award just to keep him from acting stupid and or he won't come, you know, and they know he's good for the front row and shit, you know. Kanye's a front row award winner. So when he sits down in the front row, that's that's a big look for the T V. That's that's a big look for B E T or whatever show he's on. But you don't gotta give the fucking guy an award. If somebody else deserves the award, give it to him. You know, that shit with common was whack, yo, like the arrogance, man, you know what I mean? Because everybody gets brought down to earth at one point. You know, and I like I think the fans should look more and just because somebody took a good record, don't overlook the fact that they could be ass, be an asshole too, you know. And I, I got a couple of tracks that I did with him. Like I got an album, a whole album that I did with KRS One called Royalty Check. It's new. We just did we did this album in three days. Two, I think it's two or three days. I pulled up a whole lot of beats that I had in my in my catalog. He jumped in the booth and he was he rapped on eight eight tracks one day, came back and rapped on eight tracks. The next day, and the third day, I just came in early and stayed all day and bodied everything. I just I spit on top to bottom, and we I had hooks and everything on them. Good, we done right. Now, the thing about that is the the album is 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 it's about different things. We got songs about different concepts, right? Like even now to this day, you know, KRS One instead of sending me an email 
with a vocal attached to it, he'll come to the studio and go in the booth, and I can look at him do his vocal. I can say, yo, Chris, let's 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 do it one more time, and he'll accept my criticism. And, and, and the same with, with with Primo. I can go to Premier Studio. Pete can come to my studio. I go to his studio. Like, we don't do these email things. We, if he email me something, it's just a two-track for me to write to. But but we usually go into each other's studios to record the record. Now, then we did Stop the Violence, and I jumped on some of these Stop the Violence records, and I thought we talking about the Stop the Violence movement, right? But at the same token, I can still drop How to Rob, and there's no lack of credibility to me saying Stop the Violence, and I'm going to tell you why. Because there's necessary violence, and there's unnecessary violence. There's people, there's people if a man comes into your house to rob your house, and you beat the shit out of him, you're being violent. But if a man just runs into the street because his girl cheated on him and he starts shooting guns into crowds and doing stupid shit like that, that's unnecessary violence. Cops beating people ass on the ground so they can't move is unnecessary violence. You have to understand that for game to go beefing with another rapper, that's probably about that's probably more about him, you know, keeping his his his, his namesake together for promotional reasons. I mean, I'm not saying his beef is not valid. I won't do that to the guy, but. You know, you have to understand maybe what his beef with... You, you said it was a Fat Joe was beefing with, with game or beefing with 50? 50, 50. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, there's a reason for that beef. Yeah. They, got a, they got a beef for ongoing beef. Now, nobody really knows what that beef is about but besides it really him and 50. But you can't say... I can't say that game should not continue doing what he do for the sake of stop the violence. Because if it starts to affect his record sales and, his, and what he stands for as an MC, you know... That's his own personal choice to make. But your, your credibility is going to stay with you however you rock. So it's just like anybody else. That's why on Crazy Like a Fox, he came to the studio. I remember what he said to me when he walked in the studio. He was he was saying to me how he was a part of a a, a hit list. The Ku Klux Klan and all this shit. Was, or he was on some hit list. He found out that, that day that he was on some hit list. And I was like, well, you know, you know he said, I, but I'm still here. You know, like he showed up. He showed up. He showed up to the session, and he went in the booth, and he laid his. He did this chorus for me on step. You know, and it was like that's what I'm talking about. Like everybody I called to be on that record was in the in the same room with me. Kooji Rap was there. You know, Tupac was there. Chuck was there. Like these guys all stepped in the booth at different times that I was recording that album, and they and they and they um they came they came to the table, man. I, I was I was I loved it. I loved it. I got a ton, I got a ton of premier stuff that's coming out, man. This this guy is, is premier to me, man. They should make a statue of this guy, man, and put it up in every every underground city, every city that 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 pays homage to underground hip hop should have a premier statue there, man. Cause, and, and they should have a Pete Rock statue there too, because those guys to me set the tone for what I do. You know, musically they set the tone, and you know I, I love the fact that they gave me those music beds to rap on, because you know, people got a chance to hear my voice across credible music, which opened up more doors and more ears to what I did and what I still was going to do. Um, the OG Mix CD, that's the single off of, that, that the How to Rob record is the single. I'm just going to give that away. I mean, like, I want to give the, give the community something, you know what I mean? I love the hip-hop community. They've always, those that have supported me, and even those that those that haven't supported me, I've read some criticism about my work from fans that I took into consideration because they're fans, you know what I mean? And and um, I want to give these mixed CDs out so that everybody get them. Like, I don't want to sell them to people. And this, if anybody's buying the OG mix CD online or anywhere, don't buy it because it's not, it's not for sale. I never put it out there for sale, you know? So how to rob is being circulated through the DJ, and it's not, and I'm not selling it. Um, I want to give it away. I got that. I got music from the man coming. I, uh, I got an album called Music from the Man, an album series where I have one producer do 12 tracks, right? So I wanted to do that because I wanted to see, I wanted to show people that you don't have to have 10 producers on your album. You can give these guys credit for being able to keep the consistency from top to bottom. So I have uh, one from Pete Rock. One from Primo, I have Clark Kent, DJ Scratch, I got Kev Brown, uh, Odyssey. I got a ton. I got about 13 albums, man, with different producers on them. And then I got, um, I still got American Black Man to do. Um, 
finish. I actually finish it. I got to change a couple of things on that, and that's still coming out. So I got a bunch of stuff. I got a lot of catalog stuff that I got. I got an album called Street Poison that KRS produced for me back in the days. I'm going to release that. I just got to remaster it. I just wanted to, you know, I'm just going through catalog stuff right now, just giving the fans, you know, some, some, some classic Freddie Fox and some new stuff, too. It's fucking with the chosen flows. I'm nice with mics. My hands are breaking nose like Mikey Tyson. Fighting in his prime. One rhyme and I shake up the room one time.